Paige has revealed the reason for her departure from WWE. Elsewhere, we take a look at scrapped plans for an ex-Smackdown superstar and a dream AEW slash New Japan match has been teased for Forbidden Door. More on that later on. Yes, hello everybody, welcome back to the news we did one earlier on today. Do check that out if you haven't already. But for now, we're talking about Paige's WWE departure. It was uh, in the news recently that her deal is running out soon and she will be she won't be offered a new contract. No, she it's all a very strange situation. Situation for me. I'd actually forgotten that she was still on the yeah. books in WWE. I mean, on one hand, you're thinking credit to the company for keeping her on the books for that long if they weren't going to use her. Right. But then you're thinking, she is a talented lady. Yes. She could be used. She could be utilised in a number of roles. Yeah. So why aren't they utilising her? It is very strange indeed. She talked about this on a recent Twitch stream where she's actually really successful on Twitch, so she's doing all right for herself, to be fair. Uh, but she says, WWE doesn't want to re-sign me. It's not my decision. I don't think it, I don't, I don't want anyone to think it was my decision to walk away. They weren't using me to my full potential, that's for sure. It's fair. Why do they uh, employ me not to do much, uh, to not do very much for them, basically what you were saying there. Yeah. Uh, there are opportunities I could have done. I think they just want to focus on the people who are wrestling. But she did have some positive words as well to say about WWE, didn't she? Yeah, she said, I'm very appreciative of WWE. I really am. They helped me so much. They got me a therapist when I had drinking and alcohol issues. They kept me a long time, even after my neck surgery, sitting on my ass. I felt like I had so much left to give. Uh, there is someone who can cut a decent promo and do a managerial role. It is what it is. Yeah, she also was in an authority figure role for a while as well on SmackDown. And very well. She did very well on that SmackDown role because she wasn't one of... The, it, was, it was coming after the era of the authority and Stephanie McMahon and the McMahons on Raw going, oh, we're going to give you what yeah. you want now. Let's blame Baron Corbin for all the issues yeah, on Raw. Yeah. But she was on SmackDown, obviously, and she was understated in her role. She was more like William Regal was on NXT back in the day. Right. When Paige appeared, something notable happened. That's mm. the way it should be with a manager. And she called it down the line. Yeah. She wasn't a heel authority figure, yeah. Um, she also said, I'm not leaving because I want to. They just don't want to re-sign my contract. I completely understand. There are no hard feelings. Everyone was respectful about it, but it's a bummer. They are keeping the door open. Both Vince and John Laurinaitis said they'll do that. But that is. But then she says that is usually what companies say. Yeah. Um, she also said that if they don't re-sign her, that normally means you don't have a no-compete clause. She pointed that out and said, is she well? Uh, someone asked, is she well enough to wrestle again? And she said, I feel like I can compete again. Yes, 1,000%. And someone asked also, would she join another promotion? She said, sure, if the money is right. I mean... As we've mentioned, she's doing really well on Twitch, so there's no there's no great need for her to go out and, and try and wrestle again if she doesn't want to. No, but it seems the fire does still burn, yeah, as it, it does. would do, if all, does. all you've grown up in your life doing is doing wrestling, uh -huh. <laughs> until yeah. you did Twitch, but all you did was wrestling. So who knows what might happen in the future? Uh, I'm, I'm just surprised, that even going back to sort of like a trainer's role, the performance mm -hmm. centre, Paige was a fantastic worker back yeah, in the day, yeah. brother, brother, having her pass on her knowledge to the superstars of tomorrow it would have made a lot of sense if she can't do the, the, the sort of uh, well, not even a full time schedule, like even just matches here, there, and everywhere, you know what I mean? I know, I 100% agree. And especially um, a, a few years ago, I'd have looked at this and gone, no, she, she's lying. She doesn't feel like she can really wrestle again. But now that we've seen the likes of Brian and Edge and everybody make these big returns from seemingly career ending injuries, then yeah, I, I think if she's saying that, then I reckon there's some truth to it as well. Yeah. So I hope she does what's best for her. But yeah, as you say, it is curious that they just kept her doing nothing for so long. Yeah. Um, now on to a current SmackDown, no, not a current SmackDown star, the very headline that Tom's written for us here says, ex-SmackDown star. The opposite of current. I need to get it A together. former yes. SmackDown star. Do you want me to take this one? Yeah, go on I'll then. take yeah, it. Thank Tony you. Storm is currently in AEW and not on SmackDown. She's definitely in AEW. Yes. She appeared on Talk is Jericho, as is the traditional welcome package to AEW. You get a surprise running debut, you get a Talk is Jericho interview, and a lovely hug from Tony Khan. Yeah. Why the hell not? And this is what she said about a, a, a plan that was scrapped while she was on SmackDown. They put me in a debut match that seemed to go well. It seemed like something was going to happen and nothing really did. There was bits and pieces here and there, like, oh, Oh, you're in love with Rick Boogs oh, and the no. love triangle with Dolph Ziggler and that never really went anywhere just bits and pieces here and there and then I was working with Charlotte <coughs> and stuff seemed to be picking up from there but then with a lot of contributing factors uh, kind of just led me to saying you know what I can't effing do this anymore and I need to change my life because to be honest I'm so depressed here you know we get we, we read a lot of um, quotes from people for news stories here and often those quotes are really like like harder to decipher and cryptic or maybe just a bit too safe 
I love Tony Storm news stories because yeah. she doesn't she doesn't care. She just says it like she feels it. Yeah, I, I saw the interview she did with uh, Renee Paquette on the yes. on the sessions last week as well, and she's like, "I was miserable there. Why should I be unhappy? I'm going to leave now and try to be happy again." I'm like, "Fair play to you." Yeah, hundred percent. She just she just she just says it like it is. Um, but I remember that uh, the kind of the backstage interaction with Ziggler. Yeah, it was uh, out of nowhere. It was out of nowhere, and I remember fearing that this was going to happen. Like, oh, they're going to take this really talented wrestler, and just because she's a woman and young, they're going to make they're going to make her. A, like in a, in a romance angle and basically. obviously yeah. Ziggler as well he's a guy who's having a middle age crisis at the moment because he <laughs> thinks he's from the 80s he thinks he's that Nicky Sticks fella oh, and from she, out there band and, Tony and then like she, Tony arrived and they were called she has the the Kavorka of jo, Joan Jett yeah. she has the whatever of Alice Cooper she has the, the something of Metallica the 80s era Metallica yeah. um, I don't know what they were going there but it seemed like that was sort of I can see why she's uncomfortable with this sort of stuff because Ziggler's a lot older than her. Mm-hmm, I know age is just a number, but you know it would be uncomfortable, wouldn't it? And obviously, a couple the stuff like this, which seemed a bit aimless, with the stuff like the the pitched angle for the Charlotte Flair match, where apparently she was meant to get stripped down naked. Um, weird or PG naked, but well, yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, but yeah. Top removed. I mean, and all these sort of angles, especially when you've been on the indies and been renowned as a as a great in ring worker like Tony Storm, you're going to think, oh, these angles are a step back for me. And especially when you have been sort of to, to steal a phrase, controlling your narrative on the indies for a while, <laughs> <laughs> and when you're having your narrative controlled by somebody else. You want to control your own narrative, don't you? Absolutely. But not in that way. Just um, the, the sort of way where you want to get good stuff happening. Yes. Um, <laughs> but it, it seems like Tony Storm's in a happier place now in AW, yeah. so, so good for her. Mm. Um, speaking of AW, Forbidden Doors on the horizon, or actually in just a couple of weeks' time. Uh, and there's been a few matches or a few title changes in New Japan that we talked about in the last news video. Uh, but now a match that's been alluded to, uh, which we'll talk about now, because Zack Sabre Jr. has called out Brian Danielson uh, following his match at New Japan Dominion yesterday, Zack Sabre Jr. said, um, <laughs> I can't do this in his voice. <laughs> American Dragon, can you take some time out of your busy golfing schedule at the Blackpool Country Club to find out who the best technical wrestler in the world is? Because I'll tell you now, darling, it's effing me. The sass. Oh, the quite sass quite regal-esque in the yeah. sass there, yeah. Uh, this is, a for many for many fans of a certain style of wrestling, this is a dream match, Rob. Oh, yeah, this is a match which, when it will happen, it'll get the chance, which a lot of professional wrestlers hate, I've learned by doing straight to hell down the years. This is wrestling. Oh, no, a lot of them, yeah. A lot of them hate yeah. that by a long way, so no doubt that will happen if indeed, brought. well, I assume it's going to happen since they are... The teasing it, Well, yeah, since Zack Sabre Jr. is name-dropping, we'll have to wait for Brian Danielson to drop the name back. Yeah, I, I think that's um, that's one of the ones that I, I thought that, you know that would be a great matchup, but I never actually thought it would happen because yeah. it seemed like Brian's on a bit more of a bigger platform at this stage in his career than Zach, who's not that high up in New Japan currently. And but no, they they're just going for it. You've got to imagine as well, both men are just massive fans of each other. Yeah, yeah. There was those rumours, wasn't it, when Brian Danielson or Daniel Bryan back then was going to sign his new deal potentially with WWE just before he went to AEW and they were going to get let him go to Japan and do mm. some matches. You would assume that Danielson would have Zach Sabre Jr. proper high up his list yeah. of potential matches to have. Well, I'd forgotten all about that. Yeah. The the weird clause that he was going to have. I reckon Brian Danielson's the reason this pay per is happening. Do you think he's I'm the bridge? I'm just it out there. I think he's the bridge between Why the two. Why I? On his neck. But yeah, maybe, yeah. The bridge. Um, another, another, well, another wrestler who's been mentioning Forbidden Door, but who definitely won't be arriving at Forbidden Door, because he's just said so on Twitter. Or is- Willie. Or do you think it's a work? No, 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 it's a work, but Conan sort of put him right, didn't he, this time? Right, man? yeah, so Andrade El Idolo on Twitter said, I won't be, I won't be arresting anyone from New Japan. I won't be, I'm not allowed to work New Japan. Uh, thanks AAA and CMLL, the two biggest companies in Mexico. And I, I, I got confused by this for a little while. And then Aiden Gibbons helped me out in our news chat. So thank you, Aiden, for that. It seems like Andrade is criticizing the the contentious relationship between AAA and CMLL. He's historically a CMLL guy, but then left and went to WWE. Now has since worked for AAA more recently in the past. And it seems like that connection with AAA is what is stopping him from being allowed to work New Japan, who have a historic partnership with CMLL. That's the thing I've tried, I think I've broken it down yes. in all right fashion there. But then Conan, yeah, as you say, Conan chimed in as well and said, one second there, Andrade. What did he say? It was like that. that, that there are arcane, there are arcane values. It's there, there it is. There, yeah. that's what Conan said. Um, and I and I guess that Conan's trying to say there. No, no, something can be done. The, the, I, I agree. This is rubbish, or or something to those. Or maybe he's just saying, no, this is what people think. It felt like Conan was saying, Andrade, you've got your story wrong there, pal. Yeah, it felt like that. More than the facts. Um, I would love to see Andrade wrestle just about anyone from New Japan. I still think, even though he has featured quite recently in AEW. 
He's not had the stature of like big oh, no. feature singles matches that you want from Andrade. That HFO, AHFO angle is going to take a long time to forget because it wasn't good, was it? It dragged on a lot. Yeah. Uh, and, and now it seems like Andrade, I mean, he was he was quite prominent in the Battle Royal, the big number one contenders Battle Royal recently, but I want him in a big singles, just a huge singles well, match. I don't know if it will be singles now because he's brought in his pal Roosh, hasn't he? Oh, he it has. It could be a tag Roosh. team, I don't know. He has is there a tag him. team in New Japan who they could face? Possibly, but, but Roosh has, I think, said that he's on a paper piece a paper appearance yeah. kind of deal so so I guess that means that maybe they'll do a little tag run and then maybe stop yeah I, I mean come on then spout a name out from the New Japan roster who's facing Andrade for well, Bindo I was going to say Naito because they've got the link with the, ah, the, 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 the Tranquilo the, stuff yeah and all that but maybe they'll be allies I don't know I'll, I'll go I'll go with Naito though if he's if he's healthy you I'm, heard I'm, it here first I'm, happening at the Forbidden Door pay-per-view I know he's Naito versus been Andrade a bit banged up recently Naito but you know you oh. didn't hear it here first that's that's just that's just silliness what you're on about <laughs> um, what have you got coming up this week Ross if you want I've got a voice of uh, a voiceover about all Japan which is just finished recording this morning Lovely. it's go, going out soon I've been led to believe there's a a, a, bit, a bit of camera about unification uh, history in the World Wrestling Federation we'll take a look at that mm. and then there's also a tier list going to happen I don't know what, I might be out of the weekend I guess where we're going to take a look at the notable names from WCPW oh, not wow. defiant WCPW WCPW which we of course are for life um, right so uh, check out oh, all that later that. on that's made me feel pain uh, I've got the, uh, the old Twitch stream with Owen on Wednesday at 6pm as well playing a bit of football manager uh, that's at twitch dot, uh, twitch.tv forward slash cultaholic so look out for all that this week and uh, my weirdest episodes is currently being edited so I don't know when that's going to be out but look out for that too so Luke's just dropped the LSD has he? oh what do you mean? before he edits them? because then it all goes a bit uh-huh. mad doesn't it? Yeah. he does a good job though I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not against the madness that Luke conjures oh no we, we provide the LSD for Luke <laughs> we encourage this very much it's business expense isn't it? <laughs> thanks very much for watching this video check out the other news story as I say the new other news video earlier on and um, and we'll see you very soon.